George Kirkpatrick, inspiration for the nation, celebrating people we feel good about. Well, 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 we've got two new city court judges, uh, judge-elect Shadia Tadros and judge-elect Felicia Pitts Davis. Congratulations to both of you. Uh, and and uh, Felicia, for you, I understand there's also a little bit more history there. What's what? Tell me a little bit about the history you've made. <laughs> well, um, they there have obviously been other African American judges, um, going back to the late and great Sandra Towns, um, but had been the tradition here in Syracuse and Onondaga County. Um, those the pathway to judgeship for those individuals. Um, had been by appointment first, which meant that someone on that level of court um, either finished your term, got elected to something else, and there was a vacancy, they were appointed, and then the next election cycle they ran. So this is the first time um, that you have a Black judge being elected that was not formally appointed, but was really appointed by the people through a primary. Wow, and congratulations too. Now, uh, Shadia, are you making history too? I am, but first Arab American uh, city court judge, citywide position, probably the county and, and farther than that. I mean, it, it's sad that we're still doing first at this point, but it's, you know, we're definitely blessed and I'm very excited to uh, represent first generation immigrants, Arab Americans, um, and, you know, first generation college graduates, all of it. Yeah, it's, 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 it's quite a road. So, uh, and I wanted to have you on together because you were the top, obviously you, 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 you weren't surprised at this outcome. Shadia was telling me just before we came together on the call that um, you kind of knew this was inevitable, but people still had to vote for you, right? <laughs> <laughs> um, I mean, from my perspective, as a woman of faith, from my faith stance, it was inevitable. Okay. But from my stance as a candidate, um, I never took the electorate for granted um, mm -hmm. just because of the crazy times we have been in politically yeah. when what should be baseline and foundational things have kind of been turned on their heads. Mm -hmm. So I've, I've approached this from a faith perspective um, from, from that position. Yeah, Shadi, what about you? Yeah, I mean, I went through this in 2018, staying in after the primary. The Democrat line is gold in the city of Syracuse. And then in the primary, I mean, the city residents made it loud and clear who they wanted as their city court judges. I mean, Felicia and I, uh, you know, we won by 30% almost over the next person. So there was no if, ands, or buts about this. And if they voted for us in a small group, like the Democratic primary is just a closed finite group, I knew once we opened it up to all city residents, we were just going to get more and more people that, uh, you know, our message resonated with and that were going to vote for us. Uh, so it's a beautiful thing. All right. So when you campaigned for city court, uh, Shadia, what did you campaign that you were going to do? So, uh, a whole lot to be honest with you i think we need to get the city court back to a customer service well i don't think it's ever been a customer service oriented model it needs to work for the people i mean the city court is a tribunal of shared values and um you know laws that people want to see uh, enforced and what the punishment should be and i just don't think that that tribunal has represented the people for so long that um, it, it's time to get back to that. So people shouldn't be wasting their entire day sitting in traffic court, um, you know, and, and people shouldn't have to, uh, you know, lose their license, lose their job, et cetera, for maybe a missed court appearances, a missed court appearance. There's just so much to, hit, to come at it from a uh, customer oriented um, viewpoint. And just being a city resident, you know, I, I had appeared in city court for traffic tickets when I was a kid. Um, you know, I didn't have money to uh, pay a lawyer or anything else. So I know what it's like to sit there all day. And even as a lawyer to sit there all day, we just need to fix a few things. Yeah. Uh, Felicia, what about you? Uh, now what? You've campaigned. You're, what, what are you going to do now that you promised the people that you were going to represent <laughs> uh, a, a lot more opportunity for them? I think for me, being a criminal defense attorney and being in city court regularly, like on a weekly and a daily basis, um, there's a rhythm to court. 
And what do I mean by that? Um, there's an atmosphere that exists. And you can tell those clients who've never been in trouble before or um, who have um, encountered the system in a different way. And, and it can be scary. Um, most people are not willingly in city court, for mm -hmm. lack of a better term. Someone has brought you there. There are facts in your life that have brought you there. And it can be a very lonely prospect for an individual going through that because only you, and if you happen to have counsel, you're there in the system alone. Um, and so for me, I'm sensitive to that. Um, the other thing that I'm sensitive to is the need for people to be treated with dignity and respect. Um, that is something that you can feel. Um, it is something that needs to be extended. It is something in how people dispense their duties when that is what you think about the next fellow person. And so that's one of the things that I campaigned on, but it's something that I'm big on personally. And so that's what I wanna see in my courtroom, that when individuals come in, even if they've never been there before, that there is a layer of information. So at least they have a sense of what's going on. And while they're there, they're being treated with dignity and respect that they know that they have worth. And that helps you make decisions about what you should do usually at one of the most critical times for yourself when you are facing the loss of your freedom, even if it's only for a misdemeanor, you know, that has the ability to just devastate people's lives because there are collateral effects, right? You have people yeah. who have jobs, you have people who take care of parents and who take care of spouses, who take care of children. I mean, it's bigger than just, oh, the, multi, the, the maximum you can get is one year. Can you imagine what can happen to a person if they're taken out of their daily lives for a year, six months, 90 days, 60 days? Um, it, it's, it can be significant. I'm talking with Felicia Pitts Davis <laughs> and Shadia Tadras, both elected judges. I'm gonna have to say honorable in a minute, right? <laughs> so what's- We're getting there. So right. the two of you, right? So you're both practitioners of the law. So what happens to your practices, Felicia? Uh, now, and I'm going to say Felicia until I got to say something else, but <laughs> what happens uh, to your practices? Do you give them to somebody else or do you take in a partner and then they take over? Like what happens? You have to wind it down. So for my particular practice, I'm what you call a solo practitioner. So I'm not a part of a partnership. There's no partner for me to pass it on to. Um, I'm not a part of a law firm or the principal in a law firm where I have associates who can step up. Um, I was it from clerical to the actual um, legal representation. So for me, I will have to close my practice. Wow. So um, it was an interesting position to be in between the primary and the November election because you don't necessarily want to signal that you think it's inevitable, but you want to be fair to your clients. And so having those honest discussions about what happens to my case, because, you know, I do litigation, I have cases in federal court, I have cases in state court, um, to try to move my client either towards completion. Um, so that is some of my goals, being able to get some things completed before I'm sworn in and then trying to find other attorneys and other um, legal assistance and advocacy for those clients who unfortunately may not have another attorney to turn it over to, but to put them in the best position. So that's a long way of saying I have to wind my practice down um, after being in full time practice for nearly 10 years and being an attorney for 26, you can imagine the numbers of people um, who have been clients who are saying, you know, who am I going to go to now? Yeah. Shadi, the same thing, right? Uh, absolutely. It's a wonderful position to be in uh, to, you know, transition into the next chapter and a chapter where hopefully I can uh, bless even more people with, um, you know, the work that that I've done. But yeah, same boat. I mean, it's winding down. Luckily, you know, I'm, I'm a team oriented person. So I have a lot of lawyers that I have called on in the past for various things you know specifically i'm an immigration lawyer as well and so making sure that my clients had someone they could trust as an immigration lawyer to refer them to was uh you know the biggest deal but i have a, a wonderful uh lawyer in, out in buffalo that i've been referring um to and it, it's just winding down and and keeping the phone number and having an attorney take that phone number. So when people do need their files, they need assistance, that attorney mm -hmm. can help them get those things um, so that no one is waiting on me um, or someone else to, to actually get access to their own stuff. And I'll make sure to post and let everyone know if they want their file, need to get their file to come and get all of that stuff. But 
yeah, it's closing down Tadros Law and transitioning into uh, Judge Tadros. So, wow, Judge Tadros, how many times have you said that? <laughs> that is probably my first time saying it. Wow, <laughs> same thing, Felicia? I, I have not said it myself. I've had others greet me with it, so I have not spoken it myself <laughs> as such. No, it, it's so funny, Felicia, because, um, and, and we just lost your video, there you go. Um, uh, when we were uh, scheduling you, um, it, someone, whoever's scheduling you said, well, Judge Dave Fitz Davis will see. <laughs> so, <laughs> I was like, okay, right? It's, it's <laughs> Right, absolutely. It, it's, so what do you have to do? Do you have to hire clerks? Do you have to go to judge school? Like, what What do you have to do now? Do you just walk in and on? So you're sworn in on December 31st, I assume. And then... What do you do on January 1st? You walk into court and they give you a caseload? Like what happens? So city court is run a little bit differently, say, than Supreme Court. Okay. So Supreme Court, um, you would you would be able to hire a staff. Mm -hmm. But Syracuse City Court has um, a number of judges. So there are a number of secretaries who are shared. There are a number of law clerks who are shared. Obviously, if you've ever been down to city court clerk's office, you see there are multiple clerks. So um, not so much in, in that way in terms of having your own selective staff, even though there's existing staff that you work with. Um, it is my understanding that there is judge school when it is. I, I don't know the logistics <laughs> of that. Um, and so we have to be sworn in by or before December 31st. Um, so um, the sort of... Um, a series of a go down the line kind of thing, right? So you're dealing with closing down your cases, you're dealing with trying to figure out when you're sworn in, and then if they're going to offer training prior to uh, 2021. Given COVID, I'm sure there's some differences um, than most judges have faced in previous years. Yeah, and, and Shadia, I, I can't help but think about how proud it must be for you and Felicia both to have these first, first, you the third African-American woman, uh, right, for, for your position and you being the first Arab-American woman. What does this mean for you and the other girls? And I, I, I know this is a cliche question, but I, I do think it's worth noting that both mm -hmm. of you are young women who grew up here in, this, in the community. <laughs> and I want you to say each of you about the the young girls who might hear this or might see this and about their opportunity to do exactly what you've done going to Nottingham and, and whatever school. I don't know. I know Corcoran. One, Corcoran. Not, <laughs> Corcoran, thank you. <laughs> Talk to me. Uh, so, yeah, just the answering the question of, you know, what happens at judge school. I know, uh, you know, Felicia's in the same boat. My dad was a security guard. I don't, my family was, were not judges and the rest of it. So I don't know what's next other than what people tell me. I know there is a judge school, but I don't know. Do we go check out the office first? Like, do we get a little tour? I, do, I don't know because that's not, you know, I grew up south side. Um, the beauty of all of this, which actually brought a tear, I didn't, I didn't cry when I won or anything else, but the messages I get from people and Facebook messages of they have kids that are city kids that went to Corcoran, that went to city schools, and it is so beautiful to see someone represent city schools, represent the South Side, represent what you don't normally, you know, see for as candidates. There is no big teams behind us, you know, it's just us and our loved ones that are out here grinding and letting people know who we are, who our families are, and they know us. They know mm -hmm. me, they know my family, they know the name. Um, you know, Southsiders, uh, they, they, they know it. So uh, it's to anyone that is listening to this, the make sure that when you're trying something new and you're really going for it, that you realize that it is excitement and not fear. It is mm -hmm. okay to harness the, the excitement and it's okay to be a little anxious, but never fear the unknown. I mean, if you've got to blaze through your path, blaze, blaze it. There's a God sent so many wonderful people to help us along the way. Take advantage of the help. Take advantage of the beautiful people. And you just might make history. Wonderful. Absolutely. Well, Absolutely. As a woman um, I, of faith, I, Felicia, go ahead. <laughs> yeah, I mean, for me, I, I think some of the highlights of running this campaign was when I had young people who were high school students reach out to me and say, I want to work on your campaign. Um, and to have that be young girls, mm -hmm. young ladies, um, for me was um, a self-fulfilling prophecy. You know, I'm a mom and I have three daughters, right? So it is so wonderful to see um, that what I hope that I was reflecting in my own home 
um, what I was um, giving my daughters the opportunity to see up close and personal that through this campaign, others saw. And mm -hmm. so one of the things I'm real big on is accessibility, right? Right. Shadi has said something that I think is so powerful. Um, we don't have um, existing politicians in our background. Mm -hmm. um, so it's really um, coming up by the bootstraps and it's understanding that whole process that you may be the first person to finish high school in your family. You may be the first person to go to college, um, that it's okay to be the first and that you need to be fearless in that and you need to own it. Um, but part of that for me is to ensure that I'm not the only. Oh. You know, and for me, that's the next layer of it is how do I cultivate um, mm. so that I'm not the only, how am I, how do I be a representative that transcends even race and gender? Mm -hmm. You know, how am I, how can I get to that level where it is commonplace for you to see people who are different? And mm. your first thought is not, are they a first? It's like, wow, here's, here's one of the many. And so yeah. I hope my campaign said that. Right. to everyone. Um, and that's what I want to say to young people, and particularly um, African American females, but any women of color, any young women of color, you know, we talk about, I like to talk about real issues, because for us to say that there are no ceilings would be for us as female attorneys to not be honest, mm -hmm. right? Because there are going to be some challenges. But to inspire people to know that even where there are challenges, you can always turn that around to be opportunities. Sounds good. All right. I know this, this people. So they, have you got your robes yet? <laughs> uh, not yet. Uh, not yet. I, I'm still trying to get some sleep since Tuesday. But... Send me the link when you find the robe store because I have, <laughs> I have no idea. Well, you know, I, I, I wanted people to get a chance to meet the two newest city court judges. Now, here's the thing. I'm giving y'all a chance to meet them this way because hopefully y'all don't have to meet them another way. Because <laughs> if you in that courtroom, and not, it may not be because you're trying to say hi to them. So <laughs> this is your chance to meet them, to see them. But what they're saying is that you're going to be treated with respect if you have to come before them. And uh, from Inspiration for the Nation to the two of you, we're extremely proud of you. We're congratulatory. We congratulate you on your success and your hist and the history you've made, uh, right. the two of you, and the legacy yet mm -hmm. to come because wow. of who you are and wow. what you represent to our community. Awesome. So, awesome. Uh, I, I know I said something, but either one of you want to have a final word before we uh, well, before we go. Uh, either please. I just want to go ahead. I was just going to say thank you. Thank you, yes. uh, George. Thank you to the, the city, this wonderful city. Thank you to everyone who has yes. helped in any way, even as simple as a prayer, but as big as a donation, whatever it is. Right. Thank you. I am so humbled. Uh, I am so grateful. And I cannot wait to be uh, your next city court judge. Yeah, yeah, I, I, I echo that. I, I just want to say thank you. There's just so many things that go into a successful campaign. And the biggest of that is the voters. And thank you for trusting me with your vote in spite of COVID, in spite of all of the different things that could have kept you at home and kept you from not even putting in an absentee ballot. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for everybody's support in, in every way, from financial to just saying you can do it. Don't give up. Um, thank you. And think about it. You ain't got to do this for another nine years. So there you Ooh, go. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> Woo. <laughs> And exhale just a that, little bit. I, I, I saw both of y'all say, yeah, I like that. <laughs> <laughs> you guys, uh, George Capaccio, Inspiration for the Nation, You uh, that was Felicia Pitts Davis, newest city court judge, the Honorable Felicia Pitts Davis elect. There you go. The Honorable Shadia Tadros elect. Inspiration <laughs> for the Nation.